we're gonna have a little heart to heart about Denver. I get a lot of trolls, get a lot of haters on social media, but they bring up a lot of good points, a lot of things that people think about Denver, the entire metro area, Colorado in general, and I figured let's just call it out for what it is. So we're gonna cover the top 10 things, misconceptions that people have about Denver. Now, for those of you who are new here, my name is Alex Saldana. I've been a local Denver agent since 2010. I love helping people. I love answering your questions. So if you do have anything that you want to know, just feel free. Give me a call, shoot me a text message. And I just want to welcome you to my backyard today. I'm sitting outside. It's a gorgeous day out. It's actually in the low nineties, but it's still beautiful here because I think we're at about 12% humidity right now. My wife, she runs a landscaping company. She does a bunch of vegetable starts in the greenhouse. It's kind of her happy place. And so I'm just letting you see a little bit more into my world. But if you need anything, feel free, reach out. Number one, I'm just gonna call out our altitude or should we say elevation and our location. Lots of people think we're in the mountains. Denver is not in the mountains. We are flatlanders. There's flat from here all the way until dang near Pennsylvania. Okay, there's some hills in western Kansas and Nebraska, but that's just about it. We're at about 5,000 feet above sea level, but you really wouldn't know if you were to drive into town from I-70 all the way east, like you would not see the mountains until you're about an hour from them, okay? Mountains are to the west. You start with the foothills. Foothills are not the mountains. If you want to know if you're in the mountains, just do a 360 spin. If you see peaks all around you, then you're in the mountains. Misconception that it is snowy in Denver, that I don't know why anybody would wanna move there and get hit with that winter. I'm from Chicago. I can tell you a Chicago winter is 10 times worse <laughs> than a Denver winter by far. Now, if you go into the mountains, right, you're another three, 4,000 feet above where we are here. And yeah, the snow, I mean, it's, it's middle of June right now. It just snowed a couple of weeks ago up in the mountains. Like, it's a drastically different environment up there than it is down here. You can ride your bike for 12 months out of the year here, not every single day, but you're going to be able to ride your bike a handful of days in December, January, February, and March. Like, we have incredible weather here. It is not nearly as cold as people think, and 30 degrees here is sweater weather, okay? I say it all the time, but it's true. 30 degrees in a humid environment is darn right cold. Not so much here in Denver. Number three, Denver is just too expensive. Okay, now there's some credibility here. We are more expensive than a lot of places in the country, but there's a lot of things that balance out. So number one, if you are looking to own, right? Look at the difference between property taxes, where you're coming from, and what it's like here in Denver. So the, the biggest migration back and forth throughout the country is actually Denver and Chicago, right? Both directions, actually. Chicago taxes are extremely high, okay? You come here, let's say you could afford a $400,000 house in Chicago. That's roughly about a five hundred and fifty dollars to $600,000 house here in Denver. So you got to compare apples to apples. Now, all that aside, like... I mean, you go to Home Depot or Lowe's, our prices here are virtually gonna be the same everywhere throughout the country. Like materials are pretty much the same anywhere you go. Some labor here is quite a bit more. Contractors, and we'll talk about this in a few, contractors are more expensive here because we have a massive, massive shortage of them. But other than that, like renting a two bedroom place, you're gonna be spending anywhere from 14 to $1,800 a month. And unless you're in the middle of Ohio, middle of Iowa, like Arkansas, like, that's pretty common for most of the West Coast and most of the Midwest and most of the East Coast even. So I don't get what people complain about. I think it's just a tagline that people hear all the time and how expensive we are. And sure, there are some expensive houses here, but there's a lot of people who live here and there's a lot of people who can afford it. Number four, you got to be an outdoorsy person to want to be in Colorado. Now, to be fair, yeah, we have a whole lot to do outdoorsy wise like i mean between paddle boarding kayaking uh whitewater rafting skiing mountain biking trail running hiking like you can find your group of people here and i gotta say that's that's one of my favorite parts about Colorado is when you get bored of something, like just go look for some meetup groups, Facebook groups, whatever, um, and you'll get plugged into a whole new group of people doing, you know, whatever it is you want to do. I mean, you want to be a unicycler, mountain biking, trail wizard? Like, dude, I guarantee you there's a couple hundred people who will join you on doing that. But no, not everybody's an outdoorsy type. I mean, most of the people I know who were actually born here in Colorado don't do things like go camping, go skiing. It's just, it's a difference. People who move here from out of state, 
tend to move here for the lifestyle of being outdoorsy. But no, there's plenty of people here who are just like everywhere else in the country that are couch potatoes. Number five, we're all a bunch of potheads, right? Now, we seem to be the front runners for lots of things and legalization of weed was one of them. But you do see it around a lot. I mean, just last night, uh, we were running our swamp cooler and if you don't know what a swamp cooler is, it's probably because you live in a humid environment, but it's, it got up to 94 today. I just turned on my swamp cooler. It's about four o'clock in the afternoon. The house just got to above about 76. I turned it on and that thing, man, for a fraction of the cost of AC will just plummet the house down to 70 degrees. It's just a fan with water running over some sheets. But anyways, it pulls in a lot of air from the outside. Okay? And our neighbors were out smoking pot. And so sure shit, like whole house smells like it quickly. There are some spots on I-25 on Broadway certain times of day. There must be factories or something there because uh, you can't grow pot outside. You have to grow it inside of a facility and they have to vent, you know, all of the smell of just the plants and plants themselves stink a lot. You don't have to be smoking. And so, yeah, there's times I'll drive on I-25 and you will smell weed. Uh, walking around downtown, like, yeah, you'll occasionally pass people smoking a joint. Like, it's just a thing here. It's really not that big of a deal. Uh, but if it drives you nuts, like, yeah, it's around. Number six, job market sucks here. It does not. It's tougher for tech, right? Tech industry right now is getting hit all across the country. But for construction, it is extremely strong. Why? Because we just have a massive shortage right now. So construction-wise, if you know how to build a fence, you're a carpenter, plumber, HVAC guy, like, come to denver there is plenty of work here for you number seven misconception aurora is the ghetto right anybody who ever says that has never grown up in a big city with an actual ghetto or projects because i can promise you if they came through here and drove through aurora even east colfax which yeah that's the part of aurora that isn't good that people think of as the ghetto which it just truly isn't most of Aurora are six hundred thousand dollar homes up to one point five million dollar homes in the southern part of Aurora. Like most of Aurora is really nice, except for a small section of it. But no, we don't have any ghettos here in Denver. There's not one part of Denver that I would not drive my mother through at two a.m. Okay, just let that sink in for a second. There's parts of Chicago, L.A., New York that I would not do that, but it just doesn't exist here in Denver. Number eight homeless are taken over and it is just becoming out of hand which there is some truth during it during covid like it was pretty rough my wife who runs a landscaping company she did a lot of commercial maintenance downtown and she canceled a lot of those contracts uh because it was just getting to be a little bit too intense down there there were you know camping setups all over the place now they've gotten rid of a lot of that most of that is gone uh, now with the recent immigration coming from uh south america you know we're a sanctuary city so a lot of people have been bust here yeah we're seeing a different level of some homeless families that are younger families they don't look like they're homeless i mean they're wearing regular clothes um and they're out on the corners kind of washing windows selling stuff things like that so a little bit different kind of homeless but yeah it's it's more intense than it's been, you know, as of four or five years ago than I ever remember it. So yeah, it's becoming a little bit of an issue, but once you get out of kind of the, the more central Denver part, like you don't see it, Littleton, Parker, uh, Broomfield, Westminster, like you don't see homeless people there pretty much ever. It's pretty much Denver proper. Number nine, Colorado is the next California. And you know, I didn't grow up in California. I don't know how its evolution went. I know it started getting super popular, you know, in the early 60s, um, and it just kind of exploded from then. Prices got out of hand, and how that really works, I mean, I don't know. But, you know, there's any place that has a huge draw to it, lifestyle, um, quality of life, you know, is going to get that kind of stigma to it, right? Montana, Bozeman is a great example. You know, New Mexico, Phoenix, Arizona, most of California, the West Coast, um, but it's spread, right? Austin, right? You hear a lot about the Californiacation of Austin and it does happen people have been migrating like crazy lately to florida and so people bitch about that anywhere that has a good quality of life that is going up in price people always 
put that on. Colorado is a pretty balanced state for the most part. You get right outside of the main city central area and it's a lot more uh, Republican, you know, as it is in most states. Once you, the urban areas are mostly Democrat and outside of that, it's mostly Republican. Like that's what it is. But we're pretty moderate here, I would say in general. Uh, the Republicans I know, pretty moderate. Democrats I know, pretty moderate. So, you know, I don't know. I think it's a fancy, you know, fun tagline to throw out there to kind of insult a state. Um, but I don't care. I've been here 25 years now. Gosh, 25 years. And maybe I'm part of the problem. Who knows? But you know, all the natives here that throw a fit about it, ah, who cares? There's not even any more natives anymore. You know, um, let them say what they want to say. It doesn't matter. I'm a taxpayer. I've been here 25 years and our doors are welcome to everybody. Number 10, misconception. Maybe not so much a misconception. Everybody has a dog. And you know, <laughs> there's a lot of us that have dogs here in Colorado. We've got two ourselves. I've had multiple dogs since I've lived here. Most people I know have dogs. I mean, I would say it's solidly 50% of the population of this state has dogs. If you own rentals, like, you know the traffic is significantly lower if you don't allow dogs in your rental. You go out to a restaurant and if they've got a patio area, there's a 90% chance you're gonna see someone there with a very well-behaved dog, way more well-behaved than ours, just sitting there hanging out on the patio. You know, you go walk down uh, the farmer's market, South Pearl Street, you see everybody's got dog water bowls. Now the asphalt's hotter than it's not, so they should, probably shouldn't be there in the first place. We leave ours at home for that, but uh, yeah, restaurants outside, like it's not uncommon for everybody to have dog bowls out there. We are a very dog friendly city. So if there's something you think about Denver, maybe it's a misconception, maybe it's not, and I didn't bring it up here, drop a comment below. I'll add it to the next video because I love talking about our city. I'm a big advocate of Denver, as you can probably tell. But if you are considering moving here and you're wondering about the different suburb parts around the Denver metro area, check out this playlist. I break down each suburb around us, Littleton, Parker, Highlands Ranch, uh, Denver proper, Golden, everywhere to really show you what it's like to live there so you can make the best decision for you and your family.